Hi, this is Shadi, and today I have something to report to you that's not very pleasant, but it is a part of these arts that we practice. We often talk about um, they come from war uh, arts and disciplines, and they're really they're designed to kill you. And today we're gonna see exactly that. I've talked about guard slams and guard pulls and the stuff that can go wrong and the importance of dakiage, but uh, sometimes there's just no escape and this is a very good message for you to take care of your training partners, take care of yourselves, and also be mindful of how powerful your technique can be. I know we can be very doubtful, especially when we're reflecting on self-defense, but nonetheless, it is very much effective. So, this is an old video from six years ago. According to the uploader, the kid, 15 years old only, uh, suffered from quadriplegia or, you know, the paralyzation of four limbs. You can see him in black. Um, he has an open guard, the other guy in white trying to perform what is called the uh, double underhook pass. And the kid is grabbing the sleeves to prevent the passing and then goes into kicking further away to create distance and putting like a spider hooks in. And the guy in white gets easily frustrated, tries to flip him over. It's not even a slam and he was folded on his neck and just out in, like just lights out um, it wasn't like those big huge lifts and then slammed unfortunately you know this is very dangerous again be mindful if you if you cannot get technical and pass or if you cannot get technical and throw just don't do it because there's a lot of risk in fact let me show you something this is from Kawaishi's book my method of judo from the first part of the 20th century uh, this is called Tomoe Hishigi or circular crushing um, you can see it's like a double underhook pass. You stand up in a squatting position and then you press downwards on the neck level. Let's see it sideways. So here you can see you're being folded on the neck level exactly what happened. But this here is being done progressively as a neck crank rather than just flipping them over quickly. Um, and yet it was banned from 1925 and for a very good reason. Um, there's a difference between you know, doing something quickly, explosively, and not having any source of control, and where you actually pin something and you apply progressive pressure. So, this is the message of this video. Please take care of each other, take care of your training partners, leave fight for fight day. So, this kid in white, he was probably training this way at the same time, as he, the same way he's competing. So, you know, apply pressure progressively. Uh, the submission doesn't come from the power of the yank or the crank. It comes from really isolating it and leaving them absolutely no choice. And from there, you apply subtle pressure and you get the tap, I promise. If you watch the Danaher Rogan interview where uh, Danaher says the fight, this is where the fight actually ended. And when Gordon Ryan left Cyborg, absolutely no choice. To the point where he just hooked the heel and cyborg just tapped so this is how you should tap people you should leave them absolutely no choice you should make them so helpless that they see the submission coming from miles away and yet they cannot do anything about it it's not that crank it's not that blue belt and white belt armbar crank that gets the tap so please be mindful your submission your throw uh the way you spar with your partners really reflects your ethics and if you want to be a good fighter, a calm fighter, even outside in self-defense, this is how you should be training. So I urge you, please, be mindful of each other. This is what Kanos means in the principle of, um, you know, mutual prosperity for self and others. Because if you cannot, if you're hurting these people like this, they cannot train. You cannot train. You're putting them away from their family. They're keep playing with their kids, going to their job, going to their school just because you think you're a tough guy on the mats and cranking these arm bars. This is not how we should train. So I'm asking you, please, we know that a triangle choke can be deadly, yet we apply it many times, but we should be able also to understand the gravity of it. The same for a strangle that Ayu Gracie here is doing in front of you. Uh, apply progressively, be mindful. I've done triangle chokes and won with them countless times, but same time it's a, it's it becomes like a gain to you but you should also know that this is something that can be used to create permanent brain damage or even end someone's life so 
be careful how you apply your submission. Work more on your trapping someone rather than the submission. Everyone knows how to do an armbar. Uh, from the white belt up to the red and black belt or the red and white belt. So, but if you can trap someone without strength or through strategy, if you can frame with someone and even no matter how big they are, they cannot throw you and you can just with a flip of your heel, you can put them down. This is the best way to grapple. This is the best way to preserve yourself for decades to come and your training partner as well. Like I said, mutual prosperity for self and others. This is why Kano said these things because these were used to create, you know, results like you saw in the competition. Unfortunately, it was not intended, but this is what happened. So I ask you, please, like, let me tell you a little story. Um, I was doing randori with someone and I was able to, you know, get the throw um, and also, again, I was able to get the tap from the strangle. And that person got really frustrated and they were fighting like really viciously. And it was at the end of the round and they went for Serenage and I rolled around it. You know how you protect yourself and they changed directions and they were actually just popping my shoulder at that point. And the timer went off like seconds ago and I was telling them, hey, 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 it, it's finished. It's over. You can just let go. You're hurting me. And they kept going. They kept going until... I rolled over, I became, get on my back and they stopped. And it's safe to say I've never spotted that person again. And I told him, like, that was the first time I said to someone, like, hey, what the hell? Like, you almost ripped my shoulder off. Why? It, and the time was already over. Why is that? And he was like, yeah, I got you. Like, that's not how you do it. And he was a middle aged man. Like, you cannot be thinking like a teenager as a black belt, as a middle aged man. Like, you should be careful with your training partners. I think they got frustrated because I got them and they did anything including putting their ethics on the side and putting their sportsmanship on the side just so they can get me and I did not appreciate that at all and I could have gotten seriously hurt and it can show like your character shows through your technique uh, it's just like it shows through your driving just like it shows through how you, te uh, you treat your co-workers how, what you do in order to get you know to the position you want whether it is through hard work and ethics or, you know, stabbing people in the back. Everything you do in life, it reflects your character. And training in grappling or boxing or striking is also, it's the same thing. And regarding self-defense, if you can slap and kick and you have an assertive character, you know, just like character sometimes can get you out of many fights, it can also be used in your fighting as well so if you think you know it's not enough for self-defense i have to do you know muay thai and uh dueling and then bjj and then i have no gi on friday and just just stop for a second relax all these things are more than effective and i just need you to look at this footage again on your own you know mute this video and watch it again and see the gravity of these techniques because sometimes we lose sight of it because we're caught in this technical game or competition but the main takeaway is this, be mindful of your training partner and also your technique is a reflection of your character. So, you know, you want to leave a good image and a good example. So the guys cranking arm bars and cranking serenages, just, just stop. And nobody like, and nobody would want to spar with you anymore. And also your judo is not better if you crank the submission or the throw. So just, just calm down. If you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi, and as always, thank you for listening.